What I say will now, by you, the listeners, be taken in and this message will be processed in your brains. You will listen to my words, look at my gestures, and based on your previous experiences and on your expectations, you will respond to this. In other words, my words will affect you. And in a democratic society, I could say almost whatever I want. But the thing is, you as listeners don't really have the same power to choose what to listen to. You will inevitably respond to what you hear to, whether you like it or not. And I've been interested in this, the power of information and how that affects us, how that affects our motivation and our persistence, our drive to do things. And information, it can be given at different time points. Information can be given before something, as instructions. Information can also be given during, as guidance, and information can be given afterwards, where it works more as feedback, telling us about what we have done. So I'm interested in information, how that affects us, and how that affects motivation and our drive to do things. And I've studied this using behavioral tasks and also using brain imaging to look at what happens in people's brains when they receive this information. And one way that we studied this was that we had 13-year-old students in Swedish schools and they were to do a highly demanding task. They were to remember objects and numbers uh, as many as they could and uh, in the correct order so that they could try to remember more tomorrow than they do today. So the aim for them was to stretch their working memory capacity. And just to give you an idea of why I studied this with trying to stretch your working memory capacity and so on, is because I'm curious to find out why it is that some of us go on and on and really try um, with something to reach our goals, while others feel defeated after their first try. So I'm interested in this. Why is it that some people Keep, keep trying. And when we studied this in our 13-year-olds, they did this task, as I mentioned, trying to remember things. And for you to get the idea of how they trained, I will give you a sequence of numbers for you to um, remember. And you will recall them in your head after you've seen them. So I'll show you them to you now. Three, nine, Two, seven, nine, three, seven. And then you recall them. So if you can recall this sequence of numbers, this level is too easy for you. And, and we would add on numbers until you can't remember all of them. Because it's at that particular limit where you can't remember all of the numbers anymore that's where you should start your training. Because it's from there you can start to improve. And this way, we set the task for the students in our study so that everyone would work on, on their most difficult level, where they would make many mistakes. And the way they trained was that they did this trying to remember objects for 45 minute long sessions, up to 50 minute sessions. And they were to do 20 of these sessions. Um, and that can actually, when you're really focusing on something hard, that can be very frustrating. After some time doing that, it's hard to focus for a long time and your head starts to hurt because you're really 
working on a difficult level. And as I mentioned, you make a lot of mistakes. So it's tempting for these students to give up. And a lot of the students did give up because they had the choice to stay on this training or decide that, no, I don't want to do this anymore. So as I mentioned, half of them um, gave up, but the other half, they continued doing 20 sessions of this working memory training. And then I wonder, what made these students do this training for 20 sessions? Um, and we had asked them before they started the training um, how they thought this training would be like. If, and the students who thought that this training would be good for them and useful and it would be fun, and also who thought that they would have the ability to do 20 sessions, they were the ones who also did. They had high intrinsic motivation, this inner drive to do something, and they also had high expectations on themselves. And something else we looked at was uh, if the participants had what is called a growth mindset. And a growth mindset, that is something, uh, if you believe that intelligence is something that can change with effort and training. And those students who thought so, they also trained longer or more sessions. So what the students thought before the training, that mattered for their persistence. But I've also investigated when we inform someone, meanwhile, while you do something, giving information in the form of sounds. And we used sounds informing us that we had done a correct response or that we made an error. So these kind of beeps. Um, we're very used to them today. We get them from our phones, we get them from cars and, well, everywhere really. So we use these kinds of beeps informing our participants how they were doing in a, a working memory task. But guess what? This type of information, when that was given um, for the participants in this task, it made it more difficult for them to focus on what they were doing. It made it harder for them, and they didn't perform as well when they received all of these sounds. And the thing is, um, when you make a mistake during a task, then, uh, speaking of this with a growth mindset, that will make you think of this mistake differently, depending on what your expectations are and what kind of mindset you have. If you have what I mentioned before, what is called a growth mindset, then you might see a mistake as something that um, you can change. So you see, well, I made a mistake, but I can improve, so I'm going to continue with the task. While a person who hasn't got a uh, growth mindset might think something like, well, I made a mistake, I'm so stupid, I don't want to continue, I give up. So again, what you think before a task, that matters. But again to this, when you give feedback while you do these mistakes and while you make a correct response, when we receive sounds here, how does that affect us? And this, we found that this wasn't good. This type of information, when you received a lot of sounds throughout the training, that made it hard to focus. So the participant didn't improve as much. And these types of sounds, they, uh, they can interfere with our attention. And the thing is, <laughs> I'm trying really hard to focus right now. And um, yeah, <laughs> uh, a sound like this, that will definitely grasp my attention and all of your attention because we can't ignore something that is given like that. This type of, well, sound in this case, not so informative, but it will grasp all of our attention and it will make it hard to focus. So where was I? Well, we haven't only used sounds as information, we also used words. And as words, we have informed our participants when they have made something correctly. So we've given them positive feedback. And the feedback we gave was 
that we told them, you are clever. And we compare that with the information saying your choice was correct. And these two types of positive information, we wondered, can they make our participants react differently just by phrasing something? And this was a brain imaging study. So we looked inside of our participants' brains and found that when informing someone that you are clever, that gave an increase in um, increased brain activity compared to when informing someone that you have made the correct choice. And we interpret this difference in brain activation, that when it's saying to someone, you are clever, that made our participants more uncertain. And the thing was, we also, um, they also experienced the task differently. They experienced to be more stressed when they got this information, you're clever. And they were also less motivated to continue with the task. And also they didn't improve as much. So just comparing the words used in this task, you're clever, versus the more concrete words, your choice was correct, that informs about the actual task, that made a difference on the participants, how they experienced this um, learning task. So the thing is, what we say, that has an impact, and we can choose what we say. Um, if you are a teacher, if you're a boss, a parent, for all of us, this change in only words in one sentence, that that can have an impact, that's very important. So what we say really matters. Thank you. <laughs>